dawn in this beautiful district. This is the morning seat in one corner of Mindanao in Sagayan, the Oro town. Like this tranquil early morning, anchored ships patiently wake at the bank, symbols of a popular mode of transportation in a region rich with islands. And Sagayan de Oro has become one of the main ports in Mindanao. Mindanao Island is the second largest island in the Philippines after Luzon Island. It covers 34% of the total area of the Philippines. Mindanao Island is the southernmost island in the Philippines. Its inhabitants, 16 million of them, make up 23% of the total Philippine population. Situated not far from the Lanao Lake, Sajayan de Oro is the capital of the Misamis Oriental Region. Ferry commuters from Luzon and Visayas usually arrive before sunrise. This convenient transportation mode has influenced the migration of Luzon and Visayas inhabitants in Mindanao since the 50s. Due to this migration, Muslims are no longer the majority in this region today. Nevertheless, in 1996, the Philippine government officially gave the power of autonomy to four Muslim regions in Mindanao, namely Tawi-Tawi, Olo, Lanao del Sur, and Magnanao. This move was a compromise to the original demand of Muslims in Mindanao, who wanted autonomy in 13 regions in Mindanao, which were once under the reign of the Sultanates of Maguindanao and Sulu. Among the regions are Basilan, Zamboanga del Norte, Zamboanga del Sur, Lanao del Norte, Lanao del Sur, Maguindanao, North Cotabato, South Cotabato, Sultan Kudarat, and Davao del Sur. The rest of the regions to the west are sparsely populated because of the continuous threats from hurricanes. Of all the Muslim regions, Lanao del Sur is said to be the foremost region where Islam will continue to flourish and develop in the Philippines. From Saigayan de Oro, land travel to Marawi town, the capital of Lanao del Sur, takes about two and a half hours. This is the entry point to Lanao del Sur. The scenery here is not unlike the village scenery in Malaysia. Here, the agricultural sector contributes about 70% of the total income of this region. And Mindanao is the greatest contributor to the agricultural sector in the Philippines, producing about 36% of Philippines' total agricultural yield. More than half of it comes from autonomous Muslim regions. The Philippines is the largest supplier of coconuts in the world and half of the supply comes from Mindanao. The Malay culture becomes more apparent the deeper we delve into Lanao del Sur. We can see mosques and prayer houses all along our journey to Marawi. This fertile land has witnessed a long heritage of Islam on its soil, a heritage spanning more than 500 years, a heritage that could not be colonized by the Spanish or the Americans. This is the milieu of city life in Marawi today. During the beginning, it was built without support from Manila due to the fact that there was a conflict concerning the power of autonomy for the Muslim regions here. Thus, the beginnings of the city saw only a modest infrastructural development. The landmark of the city is the Marawi Mosque that is situated in the city center. It marks the foundation of the culture of Marawi, which is based on the Islamic teaching. Time returns to its rightful track. 
the central government in Manila gave its cooperation by conceding this region as one of the autonomous Muslim regions in the Philippines in the year 1996, under the leadership of the Moro National Liberation Front. 100% of the Marawi inhabitants are Muslim. The great majority of them are from the Maranao Malay ethnic group. The name Maranao is taken from the abbreviation Ma, which means Malay, and Ranao, which means lake, hence the Lake of the Malays. This ethnic group has similarities with the Milanao Malays in Sarawak, Malaysia. Even their facial and body features resemble the Malays. In fact, they are quite like the Malays in other places. The traditional food here has many similarities to those of Malaysia and Indonesia. And the market scenario too is similar to other countries in Southeast Asia which have Malay inhabitants. There are numerous other similarities. For example, the Malays here also have rice as their staple food. Rice is the main produce here, catering to the needs of the Malays. Mindanao's rice fields make up a quarter of the Philippines' total rice farms. The demand for rice as the staple food is still strong despite Western influence who brought in other grains such as wheat. Smoked fish is also popular here. Moro Lake is said to be the biggest fishing spot in the Philippines. The fish produce from Moro Lake is the largest when compared to other regions in Mindanao and Mindanao contributes a quarter of the total fish produce in the Philippines. The abundance of food resources from the Moro Lake provide the villagers with many types of seafood. This is one of the livelihoods of the Marawayans today. In the Philippines, mangoes are found in abundance. The Philippines is one of the biggest exporters of mangoes in the world, supplying them to Asia, Europe, and the United States of America. Metal smithing here is also akin to those in other Malay inhabited countries. The etchings and carvings are also influenced by Arabic craftsmanship. The most special thing, however, is the kris, the unique Malay weapon, which has always been the symbol of the martial arts practice of the Malays. Who might have guessed that although separated both physically and politically from the Malays of Malaysia and Indonesia, their culture is still similar. All this proves that the Malay heritage is still strong in this region. Here, women usually own the shops. These women's clothes and dressings also resemble those worn by Malay women in other countries. Small bazaars selling clothes also dominate the other shops on the ground. This is the colorful milieu of Marawi town, which is situated right beside Lanao Lake. It started in 1380 AD. An Arab, Tuan Mashaika, from Johor sailed to Holo and married the daughter of one Holo noble. In 1450, another Arab, Abu Bakr, arrived from Palembang. He was married to King Baginda's daughter, Harami Suli, and was made the first king of Sulu, and named Sultan Sarif ul Hasha. The spread of Islam to Mindanao Island started with another Arab, named Sarif Maraja, from Johor, arrived in Magindanao. And in 1475 AD, King Kabunskwan from Johor arrived in Malabar. Malaban was then known as Sabanilla. He was elected the first Sultan of Magindana and ruled from a city he built in Slanga, now known as Kota Bato. From Slanga, Islam spread to the whole of Sungai Pulangi Valley. This was followed by the conversion of the inhabitants along the Simiwa River up to Zambuanga.
Only then did the Lanao Lake region receive Islam. In the 17th century, all of Davao, Bulan, Samal Island, and as far north as Bukindon came under the influence of the Magindanao Malay Sultanate in Kota Bato, except for two regions, Tagayan de Oro and Dapitan. This development of the Malay Islamic heritage is continued to the present generation in Marawi. In Marawi town, there are a large number of mosques that are located not far from each other. Most of these mosques look like they have not yet to be completed. This Islamic center mosque also looks like it is still under construction. It surprised us to know that this mosque was established since 1956. The unfinished mosques reflect the hardship of the locals in getting full financing. Therefore, development had to be done in stages, year by year, until today. The continuation of development solely depends on the donations of Muslims. Today, this mosque is still unfinished. Lack of substantial funding is one of the main reasons hindering the completion of this mosque. However, recognizing that the mosque is the lifeblood of the Muslim community, the efforts to develop it further never ceases, even after 46 years. Until today, 3 million pesos have been used to build this mosque. This is the handiwork of locals beautifying the interior of this mosque. The prayer halls, adornments and beautification display the flavor of the local architecture. The spiritual development of this mosque goes hand in hand with its physical development. This is Haji Abdul Ghafur Matki Alonto, 78 years of age. He was an MNLF activist during his younger days before being made an administrator for the Marawi local government. He is the president of the Islamic Center and one of the main proponents fighting for furthering the development of this mosque since its early days. This is one of the stories of strife to build a Muslim heritage in Marawi. Despite the limitations of the inhabitants, the advancement of Islam is supported vehemently. What we see today is the combined efforts of these determined people. The Islamic Center Mosque is built in the center of Marawi's housing area. This is the town at the edge of Lanao Lake, a town where the inhabitants continue the characteristics of a Malay Muslim heritage. Marawi is actually situated about 2,300 feet above sea level. Thus, it is protected from hurricanes. It is the hub of a region which depends on agriculture as its main source of income. Deeper into the villages, the milieu shows rural living, where the main activity is farming, surrounded by tropical jungle. It is known that this region, which is under the autonomous rule of the Muslims, contributes about 67% of the total agricultural produce in Mindanao. Dusk sees the farmers returning back to their fields. Here, the work finished before nightfall. Dusk marks the end of a working day. From this hill, the town of Marawi can be clearly seen. And each time dusk turns to night, the Mu'adlin's calls from various mosques can be heard together, as if complementing each other. Each time the sun rises in Mindanao, hope for the continued development of religion and culture is renewed. And when the sun rises, the fight to fulfill future aspirations is continued. Mindanao State University, a successful effort by Marawi after the religious conflicts came to an end. The central government and the Islamic autonomy representative succeeded in working together to end the religious feud by advocating education. 
finally, Mindanao State University, with an area of 1,000 hectares, was successfully established in 1961. Today, students from all ethnic groups and religions can have an education under one roof. The Muslim students here receive their education for free. Not only that, they also receive scholarships from the government and from the Islamic Development Bank. Besides that, the chance to receive a tertiary education in Islam is also provided. A faculty in the field of Islamic jurisprudence, or Sharia, is also situated here. Besides the main university in Marawi, there are six more branches of the Mindanao State University all over the island. The Chancellor, Dr. Siti Nur Layla Emli, is confident that this new development will help the Mindanao Muslims tremendously. Also in Marawi, an Islamic center was established, the initial project funded by the government of Al Malik Faisal of Saudi Arabia in 1973. Even the state government of Pahang, Malaysia also contributed by sponsoring the Malayan Literature Learning Center. The center was officially launched on the 31st of March in 1997. In this building, the process of returning the Malay language back to the Mindanao Muslims is taking place. Dr. Hassan Sana, who holds a master's degree in the Malay language, is now the Dean and Director of the Islamic Center and Asian Studies. And today, the Malay language once again is being spoken in Mindanao. This is the language which was once the lingua franca, or the official language, in the Southeast Asian region before the advent of colonization. This is the education bridge which will, in the future, return back the peaceful heritage that was once the norm here. It is not impossible that one day this region will turn into a developed region with a culture that promotes peace and lives behind all the memories of the wars of yesteryear. The seeds of peace have started to be tasted by the young generation of Mindanaoans after all the years of civil war. What is clear though is that Marawi is special because its inhabitants have succeeded in defending the heritage of Islam even during these periods of war. This modest education space is not the deciding factor for the inhabitants because prior to this they had to face a war in order to defend the Malays and Islam. It was respected not because of its modest development, but because of the spirit of its inhabitants, who succeeded in bringing a mission of peace into the new millennium. الله 